<coughs> Lesson 1 tonight is Genesis 22, verses 1 to 19. The promise of Abraham, or the promise to Abraham. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, father. Yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar, on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Don't lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up and there in a thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And so to this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make you descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies and through your offering, offspring all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Then Abraham returned to his servants and they set off to get together for Beersheba and Abraham stayed in Beersheba. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 and 6 and 7. The prophecy of the Messiah's birth. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he'll be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness, from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This is the word of the Lord.
The third lesson is from Isaiah 60, verses 1 to 6, and then verses 19 onwards. The coming of the glory of the Lord. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about you, all assembled and come to you. Your sons from afar and your daughters are carried on the hip. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. To you the riches of the nations will come. Herds of camels will cover your land. Your camels of Midian and Ephah and all from Sheba will come, bearing gold and incense and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. The sun will no more be your light by day, nor will the brightness of the moon shine on you. For the Lord will be your everlasting light and your glory, and your God will be your glory. This is the word of the Lord. The fourth reading is from the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18 to 23 the birth of Jesus Christ. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Thanks be to God. The fifth chapter is Luke, Luke chapter 2, verse 8 to 16. The shepherd go to the manger. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flock at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in the manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those of whom his favor rests. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And that is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The sixth lesson comes from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. 
After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and the teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophets have written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I may go and worship him also. After they, after they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with, with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, of incense, and of myrrh. The reading of the the word of God. Let's pray. Father, may our hearts and our minds be open to hear from you this evening as we draw ever closer to Christmas. Amen. Well, I wonder, what does Christmas look like in your house? Does it come with a big family sat round a table? All enjoying the turkey together? Does it come with agony and heartache because we're missing a loved one, whether through distance or through death? Does it come with loneliness? Whatever your Christmas looks like, I imagine it probably looks very busy. Or at least the run-up to Christmas is very busy. I have lots of people saying to me at the moment, oh, it must be your busy season. Well, I think that's true for all of us. We are all busy buying presents for one another. We're writing cards and sending them. We're working out what food we're going to eat. Some people panic buying because the supermarkets are shut for a day or with any luck, two days. But all this busyness around preparing for Christmas means that we often forget to stop and reflect on why we celebrate Christmas and what the purpose of it is. Because we're often so busy in this first part of December that we forget to stop and reflect that Jesus came as a baby. And I hope this evening as we've heard the readings and sung the carols, it's helped to remind each of us about the reason why we celebrate Christmas. It amazes me why Christmas is now like it is. The shops start putting things up in September, or actually even August I think I saw this year. There's the endless debate within families over when do the decorations go up? Do they go up on the 1st of December or the 24th or somewhere in between? The shops and the media, of course, think Christmas ends when we get to Christmas Day. Yet we know it's only just the beginning. This year, of course, we've had the election in the first part of Advent, which has no doubt taken people's minds away from the waiting and preparation of this time of Advent. And I know there will be a real mix of you here tonight, those who are related on Friday morning and those who are terrified, those who are upset. For whatever political views you have, this is the season, Christmas is the season when we celebrate peace on earth. The Prince of Peace comes to dwell among us as a baby. And I encourage you to come back to the heart of Christmas this year. And I'm going to borrow some words from Matthew West, who's an American songwriter. He says this, In the shadow of a steeple, 
Imagine we have a steeple. In a star that lights the way, you will find him in a manger. The heart of Christmas has a name. But I wonder, though, with how busy we all are, do we actually stop and think of that name of Jesus? And as I've been reflecting on that, I've started thinking, when we look at the traditional nativity scene, that also looks really busy because it's full of so many different people. Mary and Joseph, the shepherds, the wise men, the animals. But what if we take a closer look at that picture? What if we remove the donkey? Because there's no mention of one in the Bible. What if we remove the wise men? Because they don't come for a while. Probably not until Jesus was a toddler. We remove the shepherds. Because it says in Luke chapter 2, when the angel spoke, as we've heard this evening, today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. Jesus was already born. If we take all of that away, what are we left with? We're left with two parents and a baby. A very intimate moment. When we think of this, or when I think of this, the busyness of Christmas falls away. The significance of the presents fall away. They don't matter. But what it comes down to is the baby Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. A baby that was like any other. A baby that will have needed feeding. A baby that will have needed changing. A baby who will have cried. A baby who will need to have relied on his parents for everything, as any baby would. This is the best Christmas ever. The irony being, it wasn't Christmas. So when we start from the busyness and take a closer look, don't strive for the best Christmas ever. That's already happened, and we can't beat it, because it happened just over 2,000 years ago in a town called Bethlehem. Mary and Joseph had obeyed God. They gave their hearts to Jesus. And he calls us to do the same today. Wherever we are on the journey of life, however we're feeling, I encourage you this year, come back to the heart of Christmas. Come home to Jesus this year. Jesus is the reason why we celebrate Christmas. All the other things are superfluous. If you haven't got Jesus in your heart this Christmas, friends, you're not going to find him under the tree. The joy of the things under the tree fade away when Jesus is in our hearts. And that joy will never fade away. It won't go away when we put the tree down. It's been a tough year for our nation. You may feel you've had a tough year yourself. But this Christmas, when it arrives, take a step back. Have a look. See where things have gone wrong. And see how you can make a difference next year. Because Christmas isn't just the 25th of December. It's so much more than that. It's the opportunity to remember that God sent his only son to earth as a baby. A baby who would grow up and die for each and every one of us. So as we near the end of our Advent journey and as Christmas approaches, step away from the busyness. Take time to see if you can welcome in a stranger. Maybe you could welcome in your neighbor. Or maybe this year, there'll be space for you to welcome Jesus in. It's not about the trees, the tinsel, the presents, the mince pies, even the turkey. It's about the savior of the world who's come to bring peace on earth. Peace on earth that's so desperately needed. Peace on earth to reconcile this country. Peace on earth for all humankind. So this Christmas, receive that peace. The peace that only comes from God. Amen.
This is the se- um, lesson number seven, and it's John 1, verses 1 to 14. The incarnation of the word of God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was the God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John, and he came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He he came only as a witness to it. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet, to all who do receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling amongst us. And John writes in this gospel, We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, and he was full of grace and truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.